This is when the sky above us will be filled with darkness. We look up and what do we see? We see our books, our records. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذَا الصُّحُفُ نُشِرَتْ When the records will be spread. The judgment has begun. At that point, my dear brothers and sisters, the records are above us and they begin to fall into the right hand and left hand, some behind their backs because the disbelievers or those who are destined to hellfire, even from among the Muslims, they will see Muslim, good people who have passed, received their books in their right. And they see what happens to them. So they hide their left arm behind their backs. But the book is forced into their left hand behind their backs. That's why there is an ayah in the Quran. Whoever receives their book behind their backs. This is the tafsir of it. Another ayat says, Those who receive their book in their left. The books, what are they? They are the records, which only Allah knows their true nature and description. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them in the Quran, Suhuf and Kutub. Kutub, Kitab, a book. What kind of book? It's something that records information. Suhuf, books with, with covers in them, with pages. But they are not like the pages of this earth. These records, these books, these books with pages, they have every single atom's worth, mustard seed's worth, atom's worth of deed that we have, each and every one of us has ever done in their life. From the moment they're born to the moment they, they've died. Once you die, these records are closed. There are the two angels on the right and left to record them. And there are other deeds that you do, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not record in your book. Do you know which deed that is? As-siyam, fasting. According to the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, that Allah said that everything a abd does, a servant does, is for him or her. إِلَّا الصِّيَامْ فَهُوَ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ Except for fasting, it is mine and I will, reward for, I will reward it on a day of judgment in a special way, in a different way. Yani the angels don't know how, much reward, how many rewards you have received for your fasting. Voluntary and the compulsory. This is unknown to the angels, the amount of rewards a person receives for their fasting because it's such a valued thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the records are received, you begin to be judged on every point in there. Now, how the judgment happens with the records, there are different ways. Every person will be judged in, a, in their own way. That's why you'll find in the Quran and the Hadith different ways that Allah judges people and, and holds them accountable and questions them. Different. There are so many various ways. Some people only receive their records and then suddenly they see their actions in front of them. But nothing is judged. They only see it. And then they move on to the next stage, which is the scale and then the sirat. We're going to talk about that in next classes to come. These are the believers. Aisha, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man Whoever is judged or put on the, on, on, the, on the judgment panel, on the judgment stand, then they will be tortured. They will be tortured. Aisha radiallahu said, Ya Rasulullah, but what about the ayah in the Quran where Allah says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا Whoever receives their book in their right, they'll be judged an easy judgment. Why? If we're judged, we're going to be tortured. He said, Ya Aisha, those people who receive their book in their right, they will only see their deeds in front of them. تُعْرَضُ عَرْضًا It's only displayed in front of them. But they don't debate anything. They don't argue anything. He said the ones that are tortured are the ones who, where there is argumentation. 
between them and the angels or between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about their deeds. Those who argue are going to be tortured. Why? Because once you argue denying something, you know that in the end Allah is going to bring all the witnesses and in the end you're going to find out that what you were doing was actually lying and you were trying to hide it. And now you're going to be punished for it. So the only people who deny their actions are first of all the disbelievers and possibly among the believers who were very weak in their iman, left their compulsory deeds for example in this life. Some people will be called secretly to be judged about something which will be made for the angels to be forgotten. Let's look at this. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on a hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas and others, مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا وَسَيُكَلِّمُهُ اللَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ تُرْجُمَانٍ There isn't any one of you except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak to them one by one, one, one on one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak to you. And there is no translator, interpreter between you and Allah. So everyone will have this. And the Prophet ﷺ is explaining this to his ummah, to the nation of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. This particular secretive judgment, does it also happen to the disbeliever? According to many ayat in the Qur'an, yes. Allah says, we shall surely ask them. We will ask those whom messengers were sent to. وَلَوْ تَرَى وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ If only you would see the day when they will be standing before their Lord. إِنَّ إِلَيْنَا إِيَابَهُمْ ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا حِسَابَهُمْ They will return to us and then we are going to judge them. وَلَيُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ They will be questioned about what they used to accuse and do wrong. Allah says, Now the verses that say that they will not speak to Allah, Allah says, on that day they will be covered away from their Lord. And Allah also says, لا يكلمهم الله. Allah will not speak to them. How do we correlate between these two? The ayat that say Allah will speak to them and will ask them and will judge them is another time. It's before the judgment progresses. But as it progresses, the ulama say it is afterwards in other situations where Allah turns away from them and they plead, but there is no more response. And that in itself is a torture. They plead, Rabbana, give us, now we know, give us, let us go back, keep it one more day, let us go back. There's no more response. Allah says, they will be taken away from their Lord. They will not speak to them. He will not respond to them. But will they see Allah? No. The seeing of Allah is actually a reward. And this will only be done in Jannah. And that will be to later classes to come, inshaAllah ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, the angels will call the people one by one. And they will say, Fulan ibn Fulan, so-and-so son of so-and-so. If he was a criminal, he will be pale, and he will go darkened, and be afraid. The angels will know him. They will grab him and take him. And he will be judged, or she will be judged. And they will be given their book in their, in their left. And they will be sent with the most horrible face. People will know them. For whatever action they used to do, they will know them by that action. Fifty angels gather around them and there are colors of torture that they will have to deal with. One of them is the angels will grab them with brass claws, sharp brass claws that will enter into their forehead, into here, Nawasi, the forelock. The, the disbelievers, the criminals will be known by their faces. When their names are called out, the angels see them. And they notice how terrified they are. They know what they've done. Allah says, Immediately, 
their forelocks and their legs are grabbed like this so that their forelocks are, are so their body is arched and curved so that their forelocks hit their legs like this and the angels grab them like this they're like a ring and they throw them from place to place in another hadith it says that their brass claws immerse into their forelock and into their legs and after the judgment is done taking them from place to place in the end they drag them on their faces and they grab them from their forelock and their legs and throw them into Jahannam these disbelievers who knew the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deliberately refused to follow it on that day they will deny but what's worse than that are the people among the Muslims who will be grabbed in a terrible manner, some of them, who died with major sins, turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a long time, uh, turned away from their compulsory deeds. Yes, they're Muslims. But they have done terrible sins and they will have to be accountable. Only Allah will forgive who He wants. These types of people will deny certain things in their records. These people, Allah will cover their mouths and their, hand, and their hands and feet will begin to speak. Among them and among the disbelievers. They will say, my Lord, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. And he will say to them, your angels that were with you, say, they witness that you've done them. They'll say, no, 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 he's not, they're not my witness. I don't accept them. Your, your, your friends, your relatives, your shaitan, your, um, the other angels, your records, everything, they don't accept any of that. So Allah asks them, okay, then who, who is your witness? They will say, only myself. So then Allah says, very well. اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون. Today we shall seal their mouths and their hands and feet will be speaking to us about everything they used to do. And so Allah replies, also says that they will say to their hands and feet. They will say to them, Qalu, Lima shahidtum alayna. Why did you bear witness against us? Against me? You're my body. They will say, Allah is the one who made us speak, the one who made everything else speak. In other words, how? How can we lie to Him? He is the Creator, He knows everything. In other words, are you stupid? <laughs> what are you trying to do? So your own skin and your own eyes and your own legs and feet bear witness. Yes, he did this. He touched that. He hit this person. He walked there. He looked at that. He spoke this. Then the angels will call to the believers. And when they are known, their faces are full that you can tell they're a little bit scared, but the angels have comforted them. So the angels grab them as well. And they come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in a hadith it says that Allah will say to them, come closer. He will say, Abdi udnu minni. My servant, come closer to me. There are some special servants from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, udnu minni, come closer to me. He, that, that servant keeps coming closer and closer and closer until finally the nur covers him the hijab covers him and there is between him and Allah a veil a different type of veil no angel can hear or see only between him and Allah Abadan. no translator between them and he hears Allah SWT speaks to them in a speech Allah's speech we know that Allah SWT has, has a speech he told us this in the hadith and in the ayat he speaks he has a speech but we don't know what this speech is like there is nothing like him and he hears and sees all things just like he says he hears and sees he speaks but how does he see how does he hear not like us in a manner that befits him he knows subhanahu wa ta'ala we accept it as it is without any addition or deletion or interpretation Allah, just leave it as it is without any explanation to it but Allah speaks and the people hear him and they they know what Allah is saying 
And maybe if we have time on the radar hadith for you, a bit more about that, if need be. And Allah says to him, Abdi, look at your records. And he sees sins. Allah says to him, didn't you know that you did this sin? And I could see you. He did it in secret. And I could see you. Didn't you know this day will come? Didn't you know that today I will question you? Didn't you know? And he will say, Rabbi, I did, I did, I did. And Allah subhanahu wa will say to him, why did you do it? Finally, the servant will say, Oh my Lord, for you to throw me into hellfire is easier than to judge me and me standing before you with this sin. So then he looks at the other. Next page. He sees another sin. Worse than the other one. Same thing happens. Then he looks, there are worse sins. And sin keeps growing. And this poor believer is sitting there saying, My Lord, in the end he says, Khalas, I'm, I'm actually going to hellfire. My deeds haven't been accepted. I've done all these wrong deeds. And that's why my good deeds have been invalid. So when he is certain that he's going to end up in hellfire, Allah says to him, Abdi, you know how you kept it a secret in the former life? He says, yes. He said, why did you keep it a secret? He says, because I was ashamed of my sin, my Lord. He says, satartuha alayka fid dunya. Don't you see I kept it a secret in the former life? I didn't expose you. And that was part of my mercy. And today, I will remain, I will keep it a secret. I will not expose it. Because look, he turns the page and he sees his first good deed. Then he turns and sees a better deed. And his deeds keep growing. Then he turns back and the records are empty. The records are empty of his sins. The angels don't know. It's wiped off. This is in the ayah in the Quran that the sins will be forgotten. And then, in one other hadith, Allah SWT says to some of them, you knew a fault of your brother and you covered it. Today I will cover yours. Yani what I mean by this is, when we do a sin in secret, you should never expose it to other people, not because you should do it in secret. No. You feel bad about doing it. But you don't go around feeling happy and showing it off in front of other people, like what people do. Say, yeah, I did this and I did that, but don't tell mum, don't tell dad, don't tell this, don't tell the sheikh, don't. But I did this, and they boast about it. I got her number. I went out with it. I did this. Showing off the, the sins is worse. So Allah subhanahu wa says, you were shy, you were ashamed of it. And every human being makes sins. He finds also in his book, lots of istighfar. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, istighfar kathira." Glad tidings to the one who on the day of judgment will find in their records many moments where he repented to Allah, said astaghfirullah. Allah says in the Quran, those who are given their books in their right. which means and as for those who are given their book in their right they will scream out to everyone everyone get up and read my book you see that wonderful that, that happiness when you receive your records and you've passed and say, everyone read what's in my books. I used to believe in this day. Allah says, فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةِ الرَّاضِيَ فَهْ فَ in Arabic means an immediate transformation. Not فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةِ Suddenly he sees himself in Jannah. Why? There are two meanings to this. Either that Allah subhanahu wa puts him straight into Jannah not long after, or he will go through a little bit of a phase, but he won't feel it. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, The day of judgment is 50,000 years. How many years? 
50,000 years. Allah says, في يوم كان مقداره 50,000 سنة On a day that is equivalent to 50,000 years of ours. The companion said, one companion said, Oh, Ya Rasulullah, إنه لزمن طويل. Oh, Messenger of God, this is a long time. He said, don't worry. Wallahi, for a believer, a true believer, it will seem like as long as one prayer he prayed on earth for a believer. Maybe because of the happiness and the comfort, the drinking from the hands of the Prophet in Fountain of Gotha. Remember, we spoke about that last time. After the Prophet intercedes, and this is happening, the hadith is in Muslim. That the first people that will that the judgment will begin with in general is the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first people that the judgment will begin with is the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a privilege that Allah begins the hisab of them before anyone else. Also, the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be the ones who will bear witness to the messengerhood of the other messengers and prophets. When their people deny the Ummah of the Prophet sallam, are the witnesses that the other prophets did their message. They, 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 they carried it out. And the rest of the Ummah, the rest of the nations of the world will open and pave the way for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.